Hi everyone, this is Deekshit. Uh, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to discuss about Kubernetes best practices. To watch this video, prerequisites are uh, you need to know the basics of Docker and basics of Kubernetes objects. And coming to the best practices of uh, Kubernetes, the first one is use stable API version. So whenever you are creating a deployment, a service, config map secrets, or any Kubernetes objects, try to use stable API version. To get a Kubernetes API version, so this is the command, kubectl API versions. So this is a list of API version it will give. So that is, uh, I've taken a screenshot and I've kept it here. And uh, what does each API version means? Like if your API version has an alpha in, in its name, then it's likely uh, it's uh, likely to be a new feature which, which to be added to Kubernetes and which is not tested and if you use this one, so you might get some errors or it might have uh, some bugs also. It might not work properly. So please always uh, try to avoid this particular API version. When it comes to beta, so which is the next stage of alpha, so when in, uh, uh, the API versions has been tested properly and most likely, uh, likely to be there in Kubernetes uh, API version, but um, the way it works and the configurations which be, which will be defined in uh, uh, that particular API version might change, uh, but it is most likely to be there in Kubernetes API versions. And coming to the next one, stable. So if uh, API version doesn't have any alpha or beta in its name, so then it is called a stable, so which is always uh, safer to use, okay? As you can see in my deployment, I've used app slash v1, so it is a stable version. If it comes to uh, service, so I've used a V1. So again, it's the stable one, okay? And the next one is configuration file should be stored in a version control before being pushed to the uh, cluster. So it is always recommended or uh, keep your all configuration file related to deployment or ingress services, all the files in GitHub, so that if any issue with your uh, configuration files, like uh, if somebody has changed it because of that, it is, we are not able to, get a proper objects and Kubernetes cluster, you can roll back to those changes and you can restore your objects and uh, you can recreate your objects very easily, okay? And uh, version control uh, tools might be GitHub or SVN. You can use according to your uh, project requirement or uh, so whichever uh, thing you, uh, like which costs you less, okay? The next one is uh, write a configuration files using MyML rather than JSON. However, you can use uh, both JSON and YML both. So, but it is always recommended to use YML because it is very easy to maintain and also to manage also it is very easy. If you want to see, you can see in the diagram itself. So uh, in a JSON format, so if you want to add one, one field, so just like you need to go through a lot of fields and then you need to change that. So if you see uh, in managing perspective and uh, uh, users uh, friend, uh, friendly perspective, YML is always recommended. The next one is group related objects are uh, put into a single file whenever it makes sense. That means, uh, so obviously like uh, if you put all the objects in a single file, so it is very easy to manage. And a single file, managing single file better than like managing multiple files. I'll just show you one example. So this is the one, see, uh, in this particular, uh, um, YML file, I have service and uh, deployment put together. So when I uh, run a single kubectl apply command, so both these things will be created, okay? So managing one single file is always better than uh, managing uh, multiple files, right? So that's the reason. So if it makes sense, like uh, put all the objects in a single file and then create. Okay. And then uh, many of the kubectl commands can be applied in directory. So let's say, for example, so if you want to create uh, 15 objects, so you have 15 uh, YML files, rather than um, uh, doing a kubectl apply for 15 individual uh, configuration file, what you can do is like, I'll just show a demo for that. So I have a, a folder, uh, so in that, I'll just show you. So basically in that I have, uh, so four configuration files. Okay, so if I want to create four configuration, then I need to apply a four times kubectl commands, right? So rather than what I can do is, 
uh, I can apply on that folder. You'll see it here. Apply hyphen F, and then uh, I can just give that folder name. So when I do this, whatever the configuration files are there in that particular uh, directory, which will be created. So let me do a kubectl get all. As you can see now, all the objects has been created. So it is always better to uh, use kubectl commands on the directory. In many of the cases, you can use all kubectl commands on the directory itself. And the next one, put object description annotations to allow better, better introspection. Means like uh, the annotations are basically, uh, it's kind of uh, metadata. So if a person comes uh, who doesn't know, uh, who doesn't have any knowledge on this particular object, you can uh, easily make out. So in, in my scenario, see, I have given a better information about the my init containers, what is my init container name, what is the image I'm using, what is the command, entry, entry point command I'm running. All this information I'm giving. And also it makes sense like when you're uh, trying to uh, call your uh, object from uh, any third party tools or via, you, if you're using any API to get the information of your uh, object. So that time it, it, it quite largely helps you, okay? So always uh, give a proper annotations, okay? And then uh, the next one is, uh, don't use only pods to deploy your application. Pods will not be rescheduled uh, when uh, in the time of node failure. Obviously, if node fails, uh, your pods which are there inside the node will be failed. And pod doesn't have a feature like uh, when node comes up, like if it has failed or uh, if it has stuck somewhere, again restart by itself it is not there in pod so in that cases you just use a deployment or replica set so if you use a deployment which creates both replica set to ensure that the number of pods is always available and specifies a strategy also how to replace pods so by default it is a rolling update so there are many other deployment strategies also recreate a blue green canary deployments are there and many more deployment strategies are there. If you want to have a uh, good knowledge on uh, deployment strategies, so I have a video for that. I'll just leave a link in uh, description. Uh, please have a look into that also. The next one is uh, create a service before uh, its corresponding backend workloads and before any workload that needs to access it. In some cases, uh, let's say your application that needs uh, uh, a value, uh, variable is there that needs uh, be initialized with the uh, endpoint so from where uh, application should be accessed so if that value should be prop i mean populated success uh, if you want to populate that one properly then it is always recommended uh, first create service and then after that create the backend workloads in my case like uh, as you can see in the diagram it has pod okay and when Kubernetes starts uh, a container, it provides an environment variable pointing to all the services were running when the container was created. Let's say uh, I have a service which is named of foo. So when the container uh, st uh, starts to create, so it will send an environment variable as shown in the diagram. So that's the reason uh, it is always better to create a service first and then uh, create corresponding backload, back, uh, backend workloads. And it is always better to use uh, readiness probe and liveness probe. So, uh, basically, these are uh, health checks. So readiness probe makes sure uh, once your pod is up and running only, then only uh, uh, then only the load will be redirected to that pod. So user request will be redirected to pod. If it is not uh, up and running, then uh, it is taken away from uh, your service, and it will check for when it comes up. Then only it will be. Uh, given to service as you can see in the picture so so whenever it comes up then it is uh, given to service so now you you can expect the request from users okay and the next one is liveness probe uh, liveness probe is basically whenever your pod stacks are if your application is not working properly so then uh, in a particular time period so it will it will try to ping uh, it will do a health checks basically so if it is not responding then then it will restart so it is always recommended to use both the readiness probe and liveness probe together. And if you want to have a, a deep look into uh, readiness and liveness probe, so this also have a video. I'll put a link in description. Please have a look into that also. And uh, make use of init containers uh, because uh, there are scenarios where uh, containers need initialization before uh, becoming ready. 
the initialization can be moved uh, to any other containers to do a groundwork first and then uh, start your application container. So basically init containers uh, can be used to download files, create uh, directories and change the file permission and many more. So in this, basically in this example itself, so let's say you have application container and init container. So you want to, delete, uh, you want to uh, download an agent.jar, which is basically a very large file. So what you can do, so you can consider this as an initialization. So you can uh, download the agent.jar and you can put it in a shared volume. By that shared volume, you can copy it to application container. Okay. This uh, also makes one more advantage. What it does is like, uh, let's say application images will be always with a minimal uh, utilities. So if you want to download any jar file or any uh, file from other place, you need to have uh, either curl or wget. So if you, if you install a wget on application image, so obviously your application image will grow like uh, the size of uh, your application uh, will be increased. Even if it is like uh, 10 or 20 MB, it matters because uh, when you're pulling in uh, many, uh, many systems, so it matters. Okay. So what you can do, you can take a, um, init container so which is basically uh, as only wget utility so you can download on that agent.jar and then you can put it in a shared volume so then you can send it uh, to the application container this is always suggested so whenever it is possible always make use of uh, init containers the next one is the image pull policy and the tag of image affect when two kubelet attempts to pull a specified image so there is something called as image pull policy uh, field uh, in uh, container configuration of uh, any um, Kubernetes object like pod or uh, uh, deployment or service. So in that, if you specify if not present, what it does, uh, if uh, image is not found in local machine, so then it will try to pull from uh, the artifact. Okay. If the image pull policy is always, so even if it is there in local, so it will try to uh, pull the image always. Okay. And if image policy is not specified, so it is omitted from uh, your configurations of your container, then the image tag, if let's say image tag is latest, then uh, the always value will be applied to this field, okay, by default. And if uh, the tag of an image, if it is not latest, then uh, it, it will be like, uh, if not present, okay. And there is one more option, image pull policy never, so what it does, it never, uh, it will assume like image is present in your local uh, machine. So it never pulls the image from artifact. Okay. And uh, so you need to decide uh, uh, based on your requirement, how you want to uh, use this image pull policy. If not present, always or never. So you can choose between these three options. Okay. And try to avoid the uh, latest tag uh, because whenever you're deploying uh, uh, containers to production, so which is always better to avoid this uh, latest tag because uh, it is very harder to track uh, which version of the image is running and more difficult to roll pro pro properly also. Okay. Always avoid uh, the latest tag. Okay. You just properly uh, tag your image, then you use it and deploy it in production. And to make sure the container always uses the same version of image, you can specify its digest like rather than using a tag so you'll be having at the end of uh, if you build any image at the end of uh, image a sha id will be generated right it is always recommended to use the uh, the sha id so so that we can make um, always it is using a proper image a proper version of your image the digest uniquely identifies a specified specific version of an image so it never it will be never updated by Kubernetes unless you change, right? That's the reason it is always uh, better to use digits. Okay. So these are all the uh, things I wanted to discuss in this uh, video. There are many other uh, best practices also. So I'll try to do one more video. So and best practices. Itself. So that's all for this video. Thank you. Have a good day. If you have liked this video, please share and subscribe.